can go on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Food, drink, and music, yeah. really. Possibly yeah. the three it's basic perfect. tenets of life. Yeah. <laughs> all right, today's video is all about records. Maybe vinyl records, depending on who you are. Some people seem to get a little bit angry, irritated by the terminology, but maybe we can clear up that debate today as well. We're about to go visit Ben, who works in a studio cutting records. We're actually gonna make one today as well, which I'm pretty excited about. He's gonna show us some of his equipment, teach us how it works, and then we're gonna head to a second location where some of these records are getting sold. So let's not mess about anymore, let's head straight in. We're in North Leeds today, by the way, in case you were wondering. Now let's head to the studio. Hey, how's it going? Nice <laughs> Very slow. Yeah, nice to see you. Yeah, nice yeah, to yeah. see you. How's it going? Yeah, all right, thanks. Thanks yeah. a lot for having us over. Oh, yeah. Excited no to come and check out your, your gear and stuff. Yeah. That's some interesting gear. Yeah, it's <laughs> old, very old. Yeah. What is it? So that's a cutting amp. Oh, right, so okay. So that's like a, an amp that um, what they'd used to do would be plug microphones into that and uh -huh. sort of got like a crude mixer yeah and then that would go directly to the lathe all right so you they'd like people would sing and perform yeah. directly onto vinyl oh, straight okay yeah hi i'm ben uh and this is my studio rare tone mastering and i do uh, analog mastering and i cut records as well if it's possible what's your simplest summary of mastering so mastering the, the simplest way of putting it is you're preparing audio for the desired format. So if it's going to streaming, you're making sure it sounds good off a streaming platform. Mm. If it's going to vinyl, you're making sure it sounds good when it's been played back off a record. Uh, and same with CD, cassettes, yeah. etc. So depending on what the medium is, like the finished medium, we sort of use lots of digital stuff and, and some people use analog stuff to just sort of make that mm. make it sound the best it can on, on those yeah. formats, basically. Ben's very kindly offered to... Is cutting the right words? Cut to vinyl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cut, yeah, yeah. cut one of my tracks to vinyl. Yeah. So we've picked one out, going to tweak it a little bit and then... It's gonna be the first ever track I've had on vinyl. Oh, so I'm cool. really excited right. about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's something yeah. that I've always thought about, but I've never like hit a point where it's been possible. Yeah. So that'd be really cool to see it. A question that often comes up whenever I'm talking about records online. Yeah. Is terminology. Yeah. And some people get very irritated about certain, <laughs> certain terms. I just oh, wondered, right. as a professional industry, what's your take on vinyls, records? Does it, do you care about it? Oh yeah, Sounds I mean, like, that's, I don't care. I don't yeah, care. You know. Um, <laughs> so a, a finished record is made from PVC. It's polyvinyl mm. chloride, hence, okay. hence the name. So people call it vinyl because that's the kind of a short, short mm -hmm. net form of the actual compound, yeah. I guess. So you cut to vinyl, but you buy records. <laughs> So here we go. So we've got the track in here. So this is the original track. And typically when you get a master track, you can see how it's squared off in the, in the louder bits. And that's great for like digital, for streaming and for CD and stuff, because you want that loudness and, and that. But the limiting and, and clipping that's applied to get it that loud doesn't work as well on vinyl. You're kind of cutting a waveform into a, a bit of plastic. So mm -hmm. if you imagine like a waveform is kind of going up and down like this and it's smooth, that's what the cutting head is cutting. But if you squared it off e each thing, the cutting head can't replicate that square bit. So it, it guesses at, at the waveform mm -hmm. and then that can result in it stuff not sounding okay. like, like it should. And yeah. So basically what we do to do a remaster is, is drop the volume down, run it out, and then there's a couple of tweaks we can do to optimize it for vinyl as well, which are making sure the low end is mono. And then also like the high end, higher the frequency, the faster the cutting head moves. So with lots of like high end, the cutting head can actually burn out mm. or it, it might not be able to keep up with all that high end information. Is this part of the fuel for the vinyl records sound better than digital? argument that the mastering is is different basically yeah exactly yeah and because the the cutting heads don't replicate the extreme highs mm. as well stuff just naturally sounds warmer so 
there's nothing on this track that kind of like leaps out as problematic. That's good. So I'm just kind of putting it in quite So it's not a terrible mix? No, no, the mix is great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. like even the best mix in the world, mm. it benefits from like a, a vinyl master. So yeah, so that's, yeah, so we've got the vinyl master. Awesome. So now we can uh, we'll take it into the next room and, okay. and uh, do some test cuts. All right. And, yeah. Perfect. So this is the super rare one that it's it's the only one left only one in the world yeah and this was at the nuremberg trials these were shipped over from america because before the music industry before music was mm. like a sellable product yeah. these would be used to just record speech so you'd set up one records on one turntable they'd be as big as the mat they'd be 16 inch mm. records blanks and you'd set that going and that would be recording like a speech and then as that one record was running out you'd prep another one on mm. here and you could just flip over like that okay so you could record continuously and yeah. keep going back and forth so somewhere there'll be loads of big records some big acetate records mm. with the nuremberg trials on that this will have cut so what's all this like what's happening <laughs> yeah so that's a vacuum okay so when you when you cut a record you're cutting a little bit away let me let's see all right so this so this is called swarf that's like a groove of a record all right I don't know if you can see that <laughs> so each hair is one groove that's what gets cut and so as that's yeah. been cut there's a little vacuum this is the vacuum yeah. here <laughs> <So I'm in. laughs> and that sits just behind the, so that sits here and this is the bit that actually cuts the groove this tiny little diamond tip so that's sitting just behind it so as it's cutting it's, it's sucking this swarf away yeah does this just get binned or is there some kind of reuse for it mm, yeah it just gets turn binned into a wig. yeah <laughs> yeah i mean you could turn it into a wig a bit sharp <laughs> yeah yeah it's actually pretty soft it's is like it? cotton wool oh yeah yeah pretty sure Linkin Park have stolen that logo oh yeah, yeah. got an LP like that with oh a, right yeah, yeah with a longer drop on the oh, on yeah. the inside bit <laughs> yeah I'll tell it's uh, LA Mastering oh okay I'll tell it it's, get the yeah. lawsuit going yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we'll get the audio onto the computer first. So it's going from the computer out through the sound card into an amp. And much like an amp for your speakers, the amp just feeds the cutting head, uh, which is kind of like two mini speakers. So we're making sure that, that the whole signal chain's working first, mm. and then we start preparing the blank and um, doing a test cut. So the first thing to do is get the platter spinning and then get some anti-static liquid. So static is a big uh, sort of enemy of record cutting. So you're always trying to do stuff to get rid of that, mm. so. So what we'll do is for the test cut, we're just gonna get the get the head cutting first and then we'll start playing the music and mm -hmm. just uh, increase the volume sort of yeah. gradually. So it's the vacuum system. So that's cutting a groove now. Cool. So we'll start the audio. Okay. So I don't know if you can hear that on yeah. there, but you can pick the music you can actually so hear. So that's coming out of the needle. Yeah. <laughs> that loud? Yeah. So it's getting played through the needle, which then creates the groove. Yeah. How it's working. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. Amazing. So that's the. Uh... Sounds good. Yeah, sounds great. Right. 
so successful test coach. Yeah. Yeah. Still pretty amazing to me, even after all the technical explanations that you can do that. So. I mean, it still blows my mind. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing this every day and I still can't, like... There's something that makes it difficult to, like, just make that mental connection. Yeah. To that kind of level of audio detail. It's explainable, but <laughs> do you know yeah. what I mean? It's one of those things. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> like, I, I feel exactly the same. I can explain it to people yeah. and I know the theory of it. But it's it still like, blows my mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go, freshly cut. Awesome. Transparent blue vinyl. First ever Northern Introvert vinyl. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> look great. Something I've always wanted to do, but I just never had the chance to do it. Yeah. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Definitely won't be for sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if enough people want to buy one, you can put an order together and then uh, That's true. get a limited edition. What's your minimum? Run? order run one. Oh, so you can do one <laughs> yeah, yeah i guess the price goes down the more there are does it not work no right? because no? It, i mean it, it's all they're all real time so it's oh, that's true yeah yeah it's yeah. It, in fact tell a lie it's slightly more expensive to get like five or less done yeah because there's a bit of setup time and right. doing the test cuts and stuff like yeah. that it takes a bit of a time so five upwards mm. the, the price goes down a little bit nice there was someone telling me about an artist and i can't remember which artist it was but they released a load of lathe cuts mm. and one side was just the voice notes from a phone mm. that were the, sort of the building blocks of the, the tune right. so it was the original snippets of ideas yeah. just recorded on, onto that's a cool. phone and i think then the other side was the, the fully produced yeah track. that's a good idea yeah like a little commentary for smaller artists indie artists it's definitely like an available option for them because I think a lot of people yeah. think oh you've got to get hundreds made or something you need a big label yeah. but you could pre-sell them do yeah. a Kickstarter or something like that yeah you got one <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Finally. nice. laughs> amazing thank you so much yeah you're welcome alright what's the best way for people to get in touch with you if they want to get some vinyl or records or if they want some mastering done yeah th my any my website or socials it's all rare tone mm -hmm. mastering so rare tone mastering if you're local you can come and visit and mm -hmm have a coffee and cut a record and uh, yeah. or if you're not local we can have a zoom chat yeah. and, and talk about that sort of stuff and uh, yeah I can post records yeah. anywhere so cool. all right we got it first ever northern introvert record chloe on a blue vinyl one of a kind Let's head out to our second spot now. We're going to go see somewhere where they're selling these. Not this one. This one's not for sale. Let's head over there now, see what we can find. My name's Keith Wildman. I own the Record Cafe here in, uh, here in Bradford. As you can see uh, the vista <laughs> behind us. It's our 10th year, it'll be our 10th oh, wow. year this, um, uh, this November, so stay tuned to our social media for yeah. the events that might be coming along. And the original concept for this was, uh, originally it was going to be a record shop, maybe with a kind of a bottle fridge, that was kind mm -hmm. of the original idea. Uh, but as I was thinking about doing it, I thought, well, I like Caspia, so we would, you know, we would need to do Caspia. I like yeah. pubs, so by the time it opened, it became a lot more beer focused. Than I originally intended, yeah. but that's worked out really well. So we've got the the, um, the, the bar side of it down here, mm -hmm. uh, the records upstairs, and we do the um, meats and cheeses, Spanish mm -hmm. meats and cheeses, which sort of again lend itself well to um, just snacking along with yeah. having a beer. Good so it's food, it's food, drink, and music yeah. really. Possibly the three it's basic perfect, tenets of life. Yeah, perfect <laughs> combo. Yeah, I think it was about April 2014, I went to the Six Music Festival in Manchester, came across a few sort of newer record shops that were had little stalls, mm. I thought it'd be great to have something like in Bradford. Yeah. And I somehow ended up doing it myself, and as I say, <laughs> um, you know, you need to be a bit more than just a record shop, depending on where you're based. Mm. And no one else was doing it, I spent a lot, to believe me, I spent a lot of time looking, no mm. one else was doing records and beer, mm. you know, I had a lot, a lot of time to look and think, surely someone's doing records yeah. and beer, no one else in the country was doing All right. uh, records and beer, uh, and it's nice to see um, so many different people coming in, people bringing the kids in to buy mm. Beatles and Fruit Mat Rumours, mm. or people buying the new, for example, um, uh, John Grant album, or oh, yeah. it's, it's quite awesome, yeah. 
Um, yes. So it's, it's a real mix of people coming out, yeah. the food, the drink, or the, the music, or just having a bit of a brand. Yeah. Have you got any artists at the moment, local or otherwise, that you're particularly excited about? Before this, I was probably stuck. I mean, I'm 47 now, so uh, I was probably a bit stuck, like a lot of people my age and things I grew up listening to. Hmm. Uh, so I used to I sort of heavy metal was the first thing I got into. Yeah, okay. I used to sort of drift on to sort of hip hop and things like New Order and the hmm. indie stuff. So it'd be very easy to sort of always listen to the Happy Mondays and New yeah. Order and the Shout and that kind of stuff. But um, now there's some amazing new bands that have um, come through, certainly since we've been open. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a new Blossoms album coming out mm -hmm. uh, quite soon. Um, it's on the website, I've looked at the website, all the pre-sales are on there. Okay. Like. <laughs> uh, so I'm really looking forward to the new Blossoms album. Yeah. There's Orville Peck, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Orville Peck, sort of Canadian um, country. Okay. He's absolutely brilliant. The yeah. new album coming out from him, which I'm looking, really looking forward to. Yeah. It's such a difficult question because yeah. like, it'd been really easy 10, 15 years ago. What bands are you like? Oh, yeah, New World, the Child, yeah. and is that's that stuff. And now, um, something every week. So, I'm, yeah. kind of looking, I'm looking behind me a bit to find out what <laughs> a lot um, of options up here. It's interesting what you're saying about finding new music and how that's changed because I come across an opinion online sometimes with the videos I post about just that kind of how you can get stuck in, in a rut listening to the same artists. And I feel like you either somehow break out of that, start finding new music, or you can develop this opinion that everything's fallen off. Yeah, you know, well, you know like, whatever um, generation you are, you know, people who listen to 60s, or people who listen to 70s, mm -hmm. or people who think that everything's stuck in the 80s, or yeah. people think everything's stuck in the 90s, now you're getting people, oh, there's been a decent band since 2000, yeah. this, or since everyone's sort of <laughs> stuck in, I guess, the some music listen to as a teenager. Yeah, it's easily done. But yeah, there's, there's, there's so much uh, amazing stuff mm. out, like literally, every week mm. uh, there's probably things that pass me by trying to keep um, yeah. obviously we can't sell everything mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it is a bit it is a bit of we get in what sells but we get in what I yeah. like as well so it's kind of curated but there's, you know, there's a lot of things that if you know I'd love to sell more sort of jazz and more classical mm. but I mean you've got to really know that and that's just way out of my yeah. knowledge you literally can't get every single thing yeah. ever so like the food like the beer the record side of it is curated through yeah. things that I kind of interested in or, or like for anyone again who doesn't know where you are, how can we find you? What street are you on? What's the best way to get here? Uh, you, can <laughs> find, uh, you can find us on uh, the very end of North Parade, opposite the lovely Penny Bank, mm -hmm. as you can see behind the uh, Arab Strap record here. Yeah. How you can get here at the minute is a bit tricky because uh, <laughs> everything seems to be kind of uh, closed <laughs> or boarded up. Mm -hmm. well, uh, we're a two minutes walk from Foster Square Station, about nice. ten minutes walk from Interchange, yeah. which. Um, whatever's going on there. <laughs> Plenty of on street parking yeah. outside, big car park opposite. Perfect. Yeah, I think we're pretty easily accessible. Yeah. Hopefully the accessibility will open up as the road works disappear yeah. and the interchange opens crossed. back up. But uh, yeah, yes, nice. we are we are here and open uh, 11 o'clock through to uh, 10 o'clock most okay. days. Amazing. Uh, midnight on weekends. Perfect. Yeah, it's all on the website. Yeah. Recordcafe.co.uk yeah. yeah. and all the socials. It's fun. That is a delicious deer. Sorry, beer. How strong is this? 9%. I guess I'm walking home. Massive thank you to Ben and Keith. Super friendly guys, really cool businesses. If you're in the Leeds, Bradford or West Yorkshire area, definitely check them out. And Ben does remote work too. So if you need mastering, record cutting, even for a one-off, he can do that for you. Thank you for the beer recommendation as well, Keith. We're back for some more of these. So I guess that's it. I'll catch you all next time. I'm gonna head home. Where, where am I?